Navi General. أشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد وانتشت روحي وصار الدمع يجري يا إلهي خذ بقلبي What's up guys, it's your boy Naveed, back again, but today guys, I am absolutely humbled and honoured to be here, because I am with an absolutely amazing individual. The individual I'm with today, this guy has worked with celebrities, I'm talking footballers, I'm talking boxers, you name it, this guy has worked with the top of the top, creme de la creme individuals in the fields that you probably like guys. Let me tell you something right now guys, this guy is no other than Cam. The founder of Lime Tree Clinic and the elite performance therapy specialist. How are you doing today, my brother? Very, very good. Nice to meet you, Naveed. Very, very absolutely pleasure to be here with you guys as well. Thanks for the interview. Thanks for the opportunity to explain. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So, you know, a lot of people don't know about you, but, you know, I just want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself, right? Yeah? You know, so I want you to tell me, you know, number one, what was your dream as a youngster? Like, you've created this massive thing of yours where you're actually providing value to people out there and that's why people are coming to you because i genuinely believe you have to provide value for people to come to you right yeah so was it always a dream of yours to be who you are right now or did you have other dreams and you just just came along the way and you're like wow i think growing up in a community that we grew up in is everything's quite natural to kind of like be in a normal environment where we generally we get sucked into the life life of crime or back and forth and we get pulled into education and we pull out of education especially now our communities where we start off i mean this is my first clinic this is where we all started from lime short lime tree clinic and i think with that, we kind of, I didn't really know what I was doing up until I was about 17, 18. From there, I kind of decided, right, I want to take this path, take that path. But I was a naughty kid, but I was very smart. I was that kind of, I was, I was quite a smart kid in school, so I understood what was what and what wasn't. But yeah, and I just found my path, and I kind of just found my feet, and then I found, come across this therapy, which I loved, which is copying therapy. And I started doing it, and I kind of slowly became known as a guy who does it. And people started coming to me, coming to me, coming to me, like, he's the guy, he's the guy, he's the guy. And from there, it just spiraled. It just spiraled out of control, and then just carried on, carried on, and I kept building, building, building on my brand. And, most importantly, I believed in myself, if you know what I mean, I believed in myself. Nobody believed in me, I believed in myself, so I think that was the key, just believing in myself and just trying my best and giving it my 100% shot. There was times of people saying to me that, you know what, no, what, wait, are you mad? People were telling me, are you mad? I started off on my front room. I started off from, from, from my house. Wow, really? your house? I started from my house, I didn't have a clink first. For the first six years I was working from my house. First six years I was working from my house, from my front room. I converted my front room into a little clinic and I was working from there for about six years. Wow, guys, starting from your front room. With family and friends, no one believing you in you to get into a position where you're working with the likes of KSI, Anthony Joshua, Neymar, Paul Pogba. This is not a joke, you know. I am actually really curious. Like, how did you get to the level you're at though right now? Like, and you know what? You're right. Before we move forward, you're right. What you're saying. I always have been told that, and I always say that to people. It's not about what people think. You've got to do what you want to do, right? You've got to do what makes you happy. You've got to do what makes you happy and you've got to believe in yourself because no one's going to believe in for you. You come alone, you go alone, and you're going to take your deeds and good stuff alone as well. So you do what makes you happy and you carry on your way. Continue. Amazing. Amazing. So, so how did you... So from the front room, you started off in the front room and you slowly started building up your way. But how did you get to become the guy? Like There must have been something. Obviously, God, I'm sure you degree. Of course. That's, that, that's, that's unanimously. If not, God can give it, God can take it. That's unanimous beyond everything, whatever. Whatever Allah gives, that's, that's, that's a blessing for me. But you also take the means that God gives you, isn't it? So now you're interviewing me now. You have to take, you have to get the microphone and put it in my face, don't you? I can't interview from there. So, you know, you take the means that God gives you. But hard work, dedication, good mindset, being good and never changing as a person. Remaining humble. I mean, alhamdulillah, we've got clinics. We've got two in London now. We've got two in Birmingham. We've got one in Paris. Wow! So I'm still here in the base. This is where I started. And this is where I'm always going to be. This is, where it all started. This, is, this is where it started for me. Because if I, if, where I started from was the local people. If I stop caring for the local people, that means... What would, I've changed, haven't I? I've changed. And it takes that effect of what you're doing out as well, if you know what I mean. It takes that passion away, it takes that motivation away. Anyone can chase money, anyone can chase angle, chase, chase this, but it's good to be successful, but you've also got to remember your core value and your core moral of what you're doing. So you remember your roots and remember where you I came from. I definitely, I mean, many of my friends who are like, especially from Mayfair, from Central, these parts, they've never heard of Almark. As soon as you mention Almark, they're like, whoa, 
you know, Alam Rock, but this is it. it is what it is. It is what it is, and this is where we start. We're proud to be from here, we're proud to be from where we're from, and putting back into the community, and we'll never change, hopefully, inshallah. Amazing, amazing, martial art. You know, I just want to know, you know, how was how was your first, like, how was the feeling when you have met your first celebrity? Who was the first celebrity you actually worked with? The first footballer, the first guy I ever worked with, actually, it's happened in my front room. It's actually happened, the guy came to my front room in Alam Rock. Wow, really? The guy, and I don't even know he was a footballer. He's, from, he's actually my best friend now, uh, Suleiman Dukara. They call him the Duke, a very big player for Leeds. And he turned up and he booked an interview and he came from Leeds. And I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't support Leeds. And he came, he took his top off and he had a, I said, oh, you're a Leeds fan? He goes, I'm a, I'm a Leeds player. I thought, oh my God, I thought, how did that work? From there, we spiralled, 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 spiralled. And that kind of made a big break for him because he was the first player who initially got in contact with me. And I didn't know who he was, I just done what I had to do and he was happy. And then from there, I started working with other guys. Other guys certain names I can't mention due to security clauses and certain things I can't mention obviously due to like sponsorships but there's one main guy in the, in the, in the world of football who actually seen Suleiman with the cups on his, on his head and he asked him he goes how do I do this and that was um, a very very big manager in the football field and he got in contact with me from there we just opened all the doors Wow so they took that one person and through there bam I'll tell you the story of that one person that one person's a very he's actually got a title sir he's actually, he's actually knighted by the Queen he's a very big guy and with him when he came this is when I never had a clinic mind you the click that now now I'm in town jury quarter. So when I had this phone call, I told my friends and family, you know, everyone, everyone said to me, everyone said to me, Cam, are you feeling okay? The guy who owns the clinic, which I now own, said to me, Are you feeling okay? So what I did, just in case it might be him, I booked the clinic out for one hour. Just in case it might be him. Who turns up, he turns up. And from there, it was there. I took the risk, didn't I? I could have listened to everybody and said, Oh, that's not really gonna be him, is it? Oh forget it, cut the phone off. But I never. I took my time out, I waited there for an hour and a half, sat there waiting and got opened the door and it was him. Wow, guys, that says true to the saying: fortune favors the bold. If you don't take risks in life, how do you? Never, yeah. ever. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make that move while you can make that move and jump on it while you can jump on it and never, never listen to nobody else. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy in terms of, as long as you're not harming nobody else. You got a dream, achieve it. Do it. No one's stopping you from doing that. Do it. Achieve it. Work hard and, and never change the person. Just keep it 100 as much as you can and keep working and God willing, inshallah, you get there. Amazing, amazing. And you know, I'm actually very curious about KSI as well because. Oh, Great guy, he's KSI, great guy. Because obviously you've you've done footballers and stuff like that, so how did you transition? Because he's more of a YouTuber, and mm. he's in a bit of boxing, but how did you transition into getting into KSI? Was it through the footballers or was it through a different avenue? Generally, I've got quite a few, like even in America, I've got quite a few, like the, like, the rap rappers who are very good friends of mine, Meat Mill, Snoop Dogg, these, I've worked with these guys as well. Why, wow, really? You're joking? Snoop Dogg, I've touched with Dre, a lot of these guys, but due, due to me travelling out to America, my family, man, I can't really commit myself to going out there as much, but I do travel out a lot to a lot of these guys, like the football, like the MTV guys, Ashley Kane, all these very good friends of mine. All that. I've, got, I've, got a very, I've got a broad network of people, it's not just athletes, so I provide service because in my kind of field, it's not just about just about helping recovering, it's about being a friend to everybody as well. It's like, you've got to have that relationship with everybody. There's got to be a key to everybody, a relationship where you can get and understand. There's certain clients that I've got who'd phone me through, like in the morning and say, Cam, can, we just, can you just talk to me? So you become like um, a shoulder to cry if you know what I mean. Because these guys, from so half of them are making like half a million pounds a week, but they can't leave the house. You know, I mean, we're not making as much, but we're happy. We can leave the house, we can stand outside and sort of enjoy a cup of tea, they can't. So you've got to be there for them, you've got to be there for the people. So it's very important, very important. It's like, it's very true what you're saying, because look, we're stood out here right now, out at the shop. You're a big guy and we can still stand outside in school. Of course, you know, as long as you, as long as you change as a person. I could easily walk around arrogant and say to people, oh, this never, never the case. I'm walking around daily, I walk around, take my little kids for walks, I walk around, I enjoy, enjoy life as I do. I see the people, I support the people, put back into my community. Always put back out the community as well. Got a range of different. You see, whenever you see me around, around Birmingham, whenever people see me around, I've got a range of different friends, nationalities, ethnicities, a range of different people around me because that's, that's what I'm like. I'm a very diverse kind of guy, you know. Amazing. Very diverse. Very diverse. And I've been to parts of the world that you'd never even think of, especially a guy with a big beard as well. You'd never expect me to be in parts of Switzerland and France where you'd never see, but I'm there. I'm there, you know. I've been, I've been all over the place and it's good. All praise to God, it's good. It's good. Amazing, amazing, and you know, what, what I know is, and I always tell this to a lot of my friends, and some of them say, oh, it's, it's not true, but I'm sure you'll agree, that to become successful, yeah. you've got to imitate those who have been successful before you, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. You've, got to, you've got to take a blueprint, you've got to take a blueprint of the people and think, right, what do they do, how do they do? Your journey might be different, your path might be different, but you must take a blueprint from the people because they've got something right, haven't they? Exactly, exactly. So who would you say was one of your greatest inspirations growing up now? Obviously, you might not be in the same field, but a successful individual who, who made you realise that if he can do it, I can do it, or the fact that, even if you never thought that if he could do it, I can do it, it was more that you found them so inspiring that you were like, you know what, one day I'm going to be like as successful as that person. Maybe not in the same field, but in terms of the success level, you were like, you know what, one day I'm going to be like that. Of course. See, in, in that way, um, as a human, probably Malcolm X, 
Al Haj Malik Al Shabazz, he's probably definitely one of my inspirations because with Malcolm X, he had a cause and he believed in it and he strove for it and he went forth with it. He never looked back. Well, he believed in his values and he carried on and he come and spoke the truth and he never feared the blame of the blamers. He never feared the blame. He never. He didn't care what people think. He believed what was right and he stood for what was right and he and he left, left a trail of a pattern, as a general human as life for everybody. Malcolm X was great and obviously the best of examples. We can only see the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. That, that is the best of examples. That's number one. But we can never get there. We can only try and imitate. We can only try our best to get there. But in terms of on the, on on the, on, on this world at the moment and uh, well, who have gone and in our lifetime era, for me it was Malcolm X, the life he lived and how he lived and how he stood by the truth no matter what, how he wasn't shaken by people. You have to remember in life you're going to come across people who are going to try and rock you and phase you and they're not going to support you. There's not many people. I'm telling you as, a, as an elder brother, there's not many people who will um who will really like you know. Who really go out the way and try and support you in what you want to do, but you do what makes you happy. It's like you're doing your thing now. I'm proud of you, you're doing it, but you've got to dedicate yourself to it. You're, you're going to have people say to you, oh, what are you doing? What are you wasting time for? Forget them. You do what makes you happy. It works, isn't it? I remember when I was talking, people were saying to me, you're mad, something wrong with you. People, friends and family were telling me, you're mad, something wrong with you. What are you doing? And now the other country came, can you get me the signature of this? Old? I'm thinking, whoa, what happened now? You know what I mean? What about, what about when I first started? You didn't want to, you didn't want to know then, now you want to know. It takes a better man to think, you know what, put all that aside and continue and show him that love and that's how you do it. But don't ever, never give up, never give up, never give up. Keep trying, keep maintaining and stay firm. You know stay what? firm on your path. Wow, 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 guys. He never, you know me, I meant to ask him the question, what advice would you have for people? But I'm thinking, man, I think I've it. <laughs> you've co you've, yeah, you're covering it every time I'm asking you, you know what? What would you say though, you know, in terms of the youngsters are watching, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, We've sort of touched on it a little bit, yeah. but in terms of the youngsters are watching right now, because look, Obviously, I've grown up in Aston, you've grown up in Anrock, right, yeah? So, obviously, they grow up looking up at these guys driving these rental cars and wearing, you know, designer gear. But I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is, it's the way in which a lot of people get their money. Yeah. Selling drugs or committing th robbing and things like that. You know, me, I come from a situation where I've always been like, you know what, I don't want to be like that. I was a Muslim as well, so I think it's wrong. But even if you're not Muslim, it doesn't make a difference. It's still wrong. Human, wrong is wrong. It don't matter about religion. If you're human, wrong is wrong. Stay away from all wrong world, drugs, gangs, these things, stay clear from them, they're not worth it. It's totally not worth it. It's not. You okay. must avoid it, you must avoid it, you know. Amazing. So what I was going to say, sorry, the main question is, yeah. what, would, what advice would you have for these kids? In terms of, could they become successful, have what that lifestyle in other ways, or is that the only way for them? Because some of them are probably going to say, oh, we haven't got any school qualifications, we haven't got any grades, we haven't got any of this. What advice would you have to them, and for them excuses as well, that, oh, we haven't got this or we haven't got that, in terms of your life, what would you say to them kids out there who are watching right now, who maybe want to get far in life, they want to have maybe a nice car, material things, or they just want to have a nice life, they want to be happy. What advice would you have for them? Work hard, work hard, have a game plan and don't let nobody phase you. Whatever's going on in your mind, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to achieve, achieve it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. When you have a goal, you have a dream, you vision it yourself because only you can do it, no one's going to do it for you. So give it your 110% shot, go with it, continue, work hard and just dedicate yourself to it. There's no need to get involved in stuff that's not really going to help you. That stuff you're going to end up in prison or you're going to do a long time or you're going to upset your families. So try your best, work hard, dedicate yourself to it and just, just keep going forth. Keep going forth, keep trying your best. Amazing, amazing. So, what would you say your plans are for the future? Your plans for the future right now? Where can people see you going? Because you're already smashing it. You've, just, you've absolutely smashed it. I can imagine your empire just growing and growing and growing. Right? But where, where is your vision? Where is your vision taking you? I see you might not want to tell me everything. I know, but where do you see yourself going? Let's say next five years. Where do you see yourself going? See, at the moment, I'm 30 years old now. Well, I'm 30, so this is a good age. I'm a family man as well. So, my main important vision now is going back to what you, the first question before about raising the kids. It's about spending the time with my little ones and my family, you know. Spend time with the loved ones and just and just, just progressing on what I'm doing or I might just narrow it down and stick to what I've got and just maximise that to the potential and just really build on that, really build on that. I have, I have no ambition-wise, obviously, we all have ambitions and dreams, but I think maybe the next interview can show you a bit more. <laughs> okay, final thing now, final thing now, yeah? What is What would you say is your best quote, like inspirational, most inspirational quote that you maybe think of? I think everyone has a quote, don't they? Anyone becomes successful? Very powerful one. Okay, oh, okay, guys. You best be ready for this. My camera's moving about. What is it doing? So Come very, back. Very, very, very powerful one. Very, oh, very powerful, powerful one, yeah. It's from the Quran al Karim when Allah says, Do not feed the blame of the blamers. It goes back to what we were saying. When you have an idea, you have a plan, you have a plan, people will judge you. People will go against you. People will say everything against you. People will not support you. But never fear the blame of the blamers. Put your trust in him. You'll go far.
Wow, mashallah. The blame of the blamers. It's a very strong sentence. Never fear the blame of the blamers. Because if you want to achieve something, you have to do it yourself, don't you? They're not going to do it for you. They're, they're only there to blame you. So why fear what they think? You do what makes you happy. Never fear the blame of the blamers. Thank you very much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure, Cam, honestly. Absolute pleasure. Guys, and, um, get following. Make sure you follow him, subscribe, like, and everything. You've seen a lot more interview with this guy. Great potential, great guy. Absolute smashing character. Cannot beat him. Great guy, absolute great guy. And guys, keep on the good work. And remember, stay positive, stay strong, and stay off the streets and keep yourself busy. Thank you very much, guys. Remember, don't forget to like, comment, and share on this video, guys. Navid Central. Thank you very much. Bro, that was Navid Central.